I can do this without uh, hurting anyone, right? <laughs> Hi YouTube, welcome back to Duffworks Animation. Long time no see. A lot of you have been asking about an armature tutorial and it's time. But I'm gonna record the whole like puppet making process as a series. So in today's video we're gonna talk about character design. In the next video I will show you how to make an armature. It will be an actual armature tutorial. After that I'll probably show you how to put on the plasticine, give you some tips for that. Then maybe, if not in that same video, a video about making eyes and tips for that. And then finally, I will probably make a video about maintaining a puppet. So that's the series that I've planned out. Uh, I know you've been waiting long for the armature tutorial, but I want to start with a character design video as it's really gonna help you because there are a few things that are good to know before you design your character. I think we should just get right into it. First of all, your character has to be animated. Maybe 12 frames per second, maybe 24 frames per second. But this means that you have to think about your level of patience. How much time do you have to do this? Let me give you an example. Long hair, Long hair requires a lot of um, extra animation. <laughs> the same with clothing and long capes. Think about Walt Disney. Yes, Snow White and Cinderella and uh, the, the human characters had five fingers on their hands. But when you look at Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck and some of these, they actually only have three and then a thumb. You don't need these two fingers for a lot of body language. I mean, you need this one to point, right? You have this one, then you have... <laughs> These two fingers, I mean, yes, you have the... I can do this without hurting anyone, right? <laughs> you know what this would mean if this was one finger. And then you could also put a ring on the middle finger and you would still get the feeling that the character is married or whatever. So this is enough. I did the same thing with my chicken. He has three fingers and the thumb on, his, on, on each hand. I took it to the next level with his feet. I, I think most chicken has three claws in the front and then maybe one claw at the back. I actually just gave him two at the front and then uh, one on the back. This is how the chicken looks at the moment. Terrible. It's, I mean, this is not a chicken anymore, right? The armature would probably break quite soon. See, that's the thing about aluminum wire. After s s bending them so many times, they will break. However, it's still a pretty good armature for hobby use. And it's cheap. It's very cheap compared to the very expensive ball and socket joint armature. We're going to talk more about the actual armature in the next video, but I want to show you what I did when I had to design my chicken puppet. This is basically the same size. I don't know how easy it is to see, but it's basically the same size as my chicken puppet, right? So you have a one-to-one -one drawing, then also we're gonna take another look at this one in the next video, but this is basically the same drawing but with sort of a skeleton. Now I, I didn't actually design my chicken character for this short. I designed him for another short, a 2D animation that I made way back. I made this little short called Panic, Panic at the Chicken Yard or Panic in the Chicken Yard. I don't know how to uh, translated properly from Danish, but again, it was still an animation, so I had to, I think that was 12 frames per second, which is also quite a bit when you have to draw each frame. I mean, 12 frames, then you have one second, right? 12 drawings, one second. 12 drawings more, two seconds. It takes a while, so you don't wanna, you don't wanna animate an octopus if you're a beginner. So think about that. Think about your level of patience once you design your character. Think about the level of details and 
think about where you can simplify and what you can simplify. Another thing that I did, I mean, my script has no dialogue, so I did. I don't need the chicken to speak, which means I don't have to think about lip sync in this short. You know, getting the mouth to have the right. You know, making the mouth look the right way for the words that comes out. If you think about Gromit from Wallace and Gromit, he says quite a bit without words. It's only his eyes and his body language and his, his not eyebrows, but his face expression tells how he feels. And I find it quite fascinating that a mouthless character, that you can still tell that they're smiling. So I chose to have a chicken that never opens its mouth, which is another way, of course, to simplify a little bit. No lip sync required equals time saved. <laughs> when you make a storyboard or a script, think about, again, I have to animate this. Don't make a whole group of people that you have to animate for the first time. Start with a simple short with maybe one or two characters. Find out how you can simplify not only characters but also sets. Sometimes your, your set can help you save some time. Sometimes your storyboard can help you save some time. Plan it out. But while you plan it out, always think 12 frames per second. Maybe 24. I'm shooting 24 for most of my short right now because I began that way. I'm probably gonna go down to 12 once I get better. And 12 frames per second can do quite a lot of good. As some of you may have noticed, I'm not currently in my workshop. It's sort of a, a sorting room right now. Some of you know that I've been sick for a while and I'm trying to get, get my life back together. So hopefully I'll soon be back in the workshop. I just thought it was time to get the amateur tutorial out there. Uh, even though it's not this video, it's the next video, but yeah. And hopefully I'll soon be done sorting everything so I can move back into my actual workshop. If you don't have a lot of space in your workshop, you probably want to go for a scale like this. This is about 12 and a half centimeters tall. Uh, of course, it always depends on your character. You will have to figure out the exact height for yourself, but obviously it's easier to animate a larger puppet because if you, first of all, you can make a smoother movement. If you move a, a small puppet, one millimeter then it will look like a bigger movement on the screen than if you move a larger puppet one millimeter i mean it's easier to animate a large puppet i don't have a lot of space i really don't have a lot of space so i that's why i'm working in this kind of small scale artman tim burton Leica, etc they work in a scale like this i think something oh I, like this <laughs> I'm not, I'm not completely sure, maybe, maybe 12 inches or 30 centimeters, something like that. But I definitely don't have room for that. So I went for a smaller puppet. In terms of actually designing your character, if you use a rig or somehow attaches your puppet to the set, the base of the set, or to a rig that's attached to the set, then you will be able to make a puppet with very skinny legs, Otherwise, I would not recommend this. If, you, if you're not using a rig, maybe not even an armature, then make sure that your puppet has quite sturdy legs so you're able to pose it and actually animate it. Depending on the size of your puppet, you might want to twist the wire. We'll get back to this in the next video. I just want to mention it very shortly so you know this before designing your character. Puppet. Aluminum wire is great because you can bend it quite a few times before it breaks. At some point they will break. But I have made it I have animated this chicken for a long time, as you can probably see. I mean it's all still working. Basically an armature is a skeleton. If we as a human being didn't have a skeleton, we would collapse and uh, your puppet will do the same thing unless they have very thick legs. You can do so much more once you 
put an armature into your character. So there are different ways to do this. The ball and socket joint armatures are insanely expensive. Uh, that's why I like these aluminum wire armatures. They are cheap and they are still quite good for hobby use. I mean, they, they, they can do most of what the ball and socket joint armatures can. I know the other ones are a bit more professional, but you can, you can get a long way with these. Again, I'll get back to this in the next video. Just want to give you a short idea of what's going on here. I use aluminum wire in my chicken and I only use one piece of wire going through the legs because he's not bigger. You might want to twist the wire if you have a, a larger puppet because a, a clay arm is very heavy. Notice that I'm adding the clay directly on the armatures. The clay is heavy, so an arm will easily start to fall down if the armature is not strong enough. Depending on the size of your puppet, you might want to twist the wire. I'm not going to do that. My character doesn't have a mouth. That way I don't have to think about lip syncing. I mean, he has a mouth, but he never opens it. He's just, it's just a beak, right? So his eyes and body language are really telling everything. Instead of five, I gave him four fingers on each hand. This means that I have less stuff to move around. Find the right scale for you. Simplify your sets and your script and your storyboard. Uh, always think about that you have to animate maybe 12, maybe 24 frames per second, depending on what you choose. Maybe you choose something different. Keep in mind, I have to animate this puppet in the end. Long hair is a bad idea. Long capes, a lot of uh, clothing is a bad idea. I mean, it's, it's not a bad idea, it's a great idea. It can look amazing. But if you're a beginner, you might want to start off more simple. That's all I'm trying to say. I think that's it. Otherwise, I'm gonna go too much into details with the armatures. Let's say that's it for this one, and I'll get back to you with the armature tutorial as soon as possible. I'm gonna shoot it right away, so once this gets uploaded, it actually shouldn't take long before it's out there. I know some of you have been waiting and asking a lot for this, so now I want it to, to happen. Even if I can't do it in my own workshop, even if I can't use the right camera, that's another thing. I hope the quality is okay. I, I think it is. It looks fine, but um, I had to use another camera because my TART phone it keeps updating apps, and at this point I can't, I can't record a video, I can't take a picture on my phone uh, because it has used up <laughs> all the space by just updating apps. I'm recording this on my webcam, that's why I'm looking a lot over there. I'm looking at my screen and I have a list here. I think I've covered everything for this video, so let's just call it a day and then I will get back to you very soon with a long expected armature tutorial aluminum wire armature tutorial. Also, these are weird times. Um, I hope you're all okay out there. Uh, keep your distance and take care and, and we'll get through this somehow, as always. Yes, I'll see you soon for an unex unexpected, too much habit, long expected, long expected armature tutorial. And until then, keep animation alive.